Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here with TRQ, where you can view before you do. In today's episode, we're going to be going over the check engine light codes P0456, P0455, and P0442. These codes pertain to evaporative emission leaks on the fuel tank side of the system. And whenever I get one of these codes, this is where I usually start, at the gas cap. And the most common cause I see of evaporative emission leaks on the fuel tank side is the fuel cap. And you want to make sure that when you're filling up your vehicle that you tighten this all the way. And it's usually three clicks. Fuel caps can also go bad over time. So the fuel cap itself may be leaking or there may be some debris between the fuel cap and the filler neck. Any of these things can cause a leak in this area. This is why I usually go here when I'm dealing with evaporative emission leaks like this. I've retrieved the codes from this vehicle and it has a code P0456. Before we get too deep into our diagnosis of the evaporative emission system, I think it's important to know what that system actually does in your vehicle. If you take some gasoline and leave it sit out, it will eventually evaporate, and that's actually hydrocarbon emissions, which is not good and something we want to prevent. Also, it's fuel loss, so if you're just sitting there parked and your fuel is evaporating, you're not getting a chance to use it so you can drive down the road. So the evaporative emission system, what it does is it takes those fuel vapors that build up inside the fuel tank and sequesters them inside of a charcoal canister until such time as you're driving down the road and it can release those vapors back into the engine to be burned and consumed. So that's the whole reason why you have an evaporative emission system to begin with and it monitors itself for leaks and when you get a code for one, well it usually means there's some leak in the system that needs to be addressed. Another good thing to do if you have one of these codes is a good visual inspection of the system. Uh, the areas around the charcoal canister, but in particular, the filler neck. I've removed this rear wheel and also the cover that was over this. This can develop corrosion in this area, and if it does, it can cause those small leaks that would set that code. So if you can, put your eye in the filler neck and all of its connections and make sure you don't see any problems. While you're doing your visual inspection, keep in mind that you're looking for a fuel leak. So in addition to looking for any damage to the evaporative emission system, also smell. You can smell fuel if it's leaking. So if you smell fuel anywhere around this area, you know you've probably got a leak in that system. Continuing on with the visual inspection, this is the charcoal canister on this vehicle. These are usually located someplace near the fuel tank. They have a bunch of lines and hoses going to them. Do a good visual inspection on all of those to see if there's anything broken or damaged. If there is, repair it. That could be the source of your leak. We're gonna continue our visual inspection with the charcoal canister on the bench and just look around for any damage that you might see on the outside of it. This lives under the vehicle, so if you hit some road debris or something like that, it can come up and hit this and possibly damage it. This side is the charcoal canister. This is the sensor that measures the amount of vacuum or pressure inside of the system. These are manufacturer specific as far as testing is concerned because there's gonna be a five volt reference, there'll be a ground, and then there'll be a signal wire coming out of it. So I'm not gonna show the testing of that. If this is an issue, there's normally a code just for the sensor. What we're gonna do now is the canister vent solenoid. And what this does is if you, uh, when the system activates, you need to allow fresh air to come in to allow the vapors to come out. So you can't just try to run the vapors out. It's like when you put your finger over a straw and lift it up out of a uh, uh, drink. All that drink stays inside the straw until you move your finger. Well, basically this valve is moving the finger. And we're gonna test that now to see if it's sealed. You can see that this wire um, goes from this connector up over here to this uh, solenoid, so we can actually plug into this part. I'm gonna test this entire wiring harness and the solenoid all at the same time by testing down here instead of up over here. I'm gonna take a vacuum pump, which I have here, that I'm going to insert into the back here. And then, um, I'm gonna be using a power probe, but if you can supply power and ground to uh, this solenoid, you should be able to activate it like I'm gonna do here. So there's two connections on the inside of it. Well, first, let's just see what kind of uh, vacuum it's able to hold. So with it just hooked up and the solenoid is not activated, it doesn't hold any vacuum, doesn't produce any vacuum. But when we activate the solenoid and do this, supply power, you can feel it a lot of times. You can hear it click and I can also feel it. So if I don't feel any activation when I do this, this could mean that the solenoid's bad. 
right from the beginning, but I'll activate the solenoid and I'll apply vacuum to it. And then it should hold vacuum. This has been holding vacuum for a good amount of time now, and I think we can reasonably conclude that this solenoid is good. Uh, it, when we activated it, it held vacuum. When we didn't activate it, it didn't hold vacuum. So that says to me it's doing what it should. But if it was leaking down slowly, then that would indicate a problem likely with this valve and you'd need to replace it. But given everything that we've seen here, I believe the problem was a loose gas cap, but I'm hoping this testing was something that you can use to see if your evaporative emission system is working properly. After you're done with your testing, make sure you hook all the lines and connections back up. Otherwise, you could end up creating a problem that you didn't have before. Now that we've completed our inspection of the evaporative emission system in this vehicle, I believe it was the gas cap was the cause. It wasn't quite tight when I first checked it. So I'm gonna clear the codes now, but it may take a while before I can say that this vehicle is fixed because these codes don't set right away if there's a problem. It has to go through a few drive cycles. So drive it around for a couple of weeks. If you got no check engine light after that, you're probably good. If you do, well, you can go back through what I've shown you in this video and hopefully you'll be able to find the problem. But for now, let's clear the codes. Some scan tools have the ability to monitor the evaporative emission system, and this one does. So in order to verify your repair, you can sometimes run a test with the scan tool like this one just did. I believe we've fixed this one. Evaporative emission leaks can be difficult to track down. Normally what I would use is what's called a smoke machine where you run pressurized smoke into the system and you look for the leaks that way. That can be helpful, but that machine's very expensive and I didn't think many of you out there might have one, so I tried to show you methods without a smoke machine in this video, and I hope that was helpful to you. There will also be additional information down in the description, so check there if you have other questions. I'm Eric the Car Guy here with TRQ. Be sure to view before you do. Thank you so much for watching today. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. I'll see you next time. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.